Hello guys, it's me. Um, sorry for the sound of the fan in the background. It is Australian summer and I'm dying. Uh, recently, I got this book and it gave me an idea. Each of the species described in this book has a description based off their physical appearance. And I thought I could try drawing them based off this description and then do a comparison using actual proper references. I usually forget about using references. So I think this series will help me start using them more. The main wolf as described in this book is a very tall South American canid occasionally nicknamed the fox on stilts. Despite its names, it is its own species, Crozylon brachyrus, and is most closely related to the genus Lylalopex, which includes other South American canids, like the pampas fox and chillus. Their range includes Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Paraguay, and Peru. Their habitat is usually made up of tall grasslands, shrubs, woodlands, and wet fields, but not in high altitudes or rainforests. Main wolves are usually solitary, but pairs may share a territory. They are omnivorous and typically eat fruit and small to medium mammals like paca, rabbits, and armadillos. Their main predators are cougars and jaguar. They are crespiculous and nocturnal and spend most of the day asleep. Their vocalization is called a raw bark. Now, onto the drawing. The book describes them as a large and very distinctive canid with extremely long legs. It is the largest South American canid. Coat is thick and soft, orange-brown to reddish golden on the back and underside, lacking underfur. Throat is white. Mouth, base of the neck and legs are black. Head is small in proportion to the body with a long, fox-like muzzle. Ears are large, straight and tent-shaped, white inside. Eyes are large and slanting, brown in colour with round pupils. Visible erectile black mane on the nape of the neck and, lip and back. Limbs are exceptionally long and thin, which gives it its fox on stilts nickname. Tail is proportionally short and white, ending in a white tuft. I struggled a lot with choosing a base colour and also getting the shape of the face right. Um, and it did end up being too dark and red compared to my reference, as well as the muzzle being too long and the ears being slightly strangely shaped. I was trying to go for a more realistic style, but because I don't draw in that style very often, um, it didn't. <laughs> it was a little bit funky. Um, I did end up enjoying the end result. I thought it did actually look good. And it was actually recognisable as a main wolf, which was <laughs> my end goal. But there's just something slightly off about the original. It's probably that I've drawn the, the head too big again. But it has the long legs. It has the thick, the fl thick white tail. And it has the is basically I worked with what I had in portion with what I was given with by the description and the limitations of my own style. For the more realistic drawing, I was able to get a better coat colour, which was less reddish than I originally thought. I also saw that I placed the legs too far from like the bottom, the rib cage. So it was and it was pushed too far back on the neck whereas in a actual main wolf they're further forward on the body it kind of doesn't really have any neck which i think is adorable um i also made the legs a lot longer and fixed how the paws looked then once i had finished with that i decided to do a little stylized drawing and i really like how they came out i took on board what i'd learned with both of the species namely the paws the less the more golden coat color Long, long legs. He looks really happy. <laughs> um, I probably could have made the legs a little longer on that drawing, but he looked great anyways. On a more serious note, the maned wolf is subject to many threats, including deforestation, loss of habitat and grasslands, road hills, direct persecution by humans due to the implication that they steal um, prey, they steal um, livestock, and disease due to contact with domestic animals. Thankfully, hybridization does not threaten them as it does with a lot of other animals, but they are currently vulnerable. Oh, sorry, they're near threatened on the red list. Um, I've put some resources in the description, so if you, if you want to, or if you have the money to, you can donate to them. Hope you're able to spare something for this cause. Um, this book has a ton of canids, so I'm really so I'm planning on making this more of a full-fledged series. I also recently got a book from the same author 
felids and hyenas of the world. Sorry, that's definitely going to be something that crops up one, maybe once I'm done, maybe at the same time. And uh, when I was doing a little bit of research about this author, he's also written one called Bovids of the World about, like, antelopes and stuff. So I might look into that a bit later. All in all, I think this series is going to be one I have a lot of fun with. And I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. See ya!